Hey, it's Dr. Gina Loudon filling in here on Focal Point for the wonderful Brian Fisher, who's out today having a small procedure. He will be, I'm making it sound like plastic surgery now. Brian's not getting plastic surgery. And the screws that he has loose are not in his head. They are in his knee. He's getting them fixed. A hip. Okay, knee, hip. It's, it's a joint in the leg, okay? Producer Jason, all, all into the details here. Brian doesn't care. He just knows that... Uh, we're going to do our best to have fun together today, and that's why I am happy to be with you. Uh, Jeff, you're going to let us know if there are any updates at all on Brian, if he's out of surgery or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, I called I during the news, and I haven't heard any. He's not answering the phone yet. So that means he's in surgery because he was uh, he's in Sleepyville on probably some very delightful drugs uh, because uh, he was, he was uh, all over my Facebook page this morning. And I said, Jeff, was that really Brian? Because right before I came on air, <laughs> there was somebody all over my Facebook page that said he was Brian Fisher. Jeff's like, yep, that was really Brian Fisher. I am Dr. Gina Loudon. I, uh, I do a lot of political commentary on Fox News. And uh, I uh, also I have a show called Smart Life that I do on moneybizlife.com. You can find me at drginashow.com if you want to know more about me. But the most important thing you need to know about me is I am the very in love wife of a former senator from Missouri, John Loudon, and the very proud mama of five children, including one by the blessing of adoption who happens to have Down syndrome. And I'm happy to be here with you, and I love radio, and it's good to be back with you. Um, in San Diego, uh, I live not too far from Santa Barbara, and there was a crazed gunman I got a lot going on around me. The Tamarisa case right down the right down the way from me, right down south and just up north. The crazed gunman killed several after stabbing his three roommates. I intentionally don't say his name. I will not say his name. I don't want to say his name. I don't want him to have any glory in this. A lot of these killers, believe it or not, that's a big part of why they do it. But it strikes me they were killed in a gun-free zone. And it strikes me that a lot of people, including the father of one of the victims is saying, well, the whole issue is we need tighter gun control and especially for the mentally ill. In fact, one of our callers a little earlier said something of the sort. So I invited on the show with me today, Dr. John Lott. He is from the Crime Prevention Research Center. He's the president of that organization. You can find him at crimepreventionresearchcenter.org. Dr. Lott, welcome to Focal Point. Oh, great to talk to you. Thanks for having me on. Love having you on. Love your work because it is all rooted in statistical and data fact. And that's no matter how they want to skew everything they put into sound bites on the alphabet soup news every night, they can't take away your facts, Dr. Lott. Dr. Lott, what are the answers for this desperate father here uh, who's just lost his son? Is it more gun control? Well, uh, According to different gun control groups, uh, like the Brady campaign, California already has the strictest gun control laws of any state in the country. And that's where this and, happened. Right, exactly. Yeah. And um, my concern is that, uh, you know, it's a lot of the laws that you have there actually make it more likely that these types of events would happen. If you go through and uh, read the... Um, uh, the memo, the, or the this manifesto, this 141-page manifesto that Roger put together, one of the things that becomes very clear is that uh, there's a reason why he picked the particular venue that he did to go and do the attack, and that yeah. was that people weren't able to go and defend themselves. Uh, I, I just read you one of the discussions that he has uh, in here, and, and again, this is He's going through different venues that he could go and attack people at. And he says, quote, another option was Deltopia, a day nice. in which many young people pour in from all over the state to have a spring break party on Del Playa Street. Hmm. I figured this would be a perfect day to attack Isla Vista. But after watching YouTube videos for previous Deltopia parties, I saw there were way too many cops walking around on such an event. It would be impossible to kill enough of my enemies before being dispatched by those damnable cops. And look, uh, end quote, and the um, police are extremely important. Uh, obviously, they're very important in reducing crime, and, uh, but police can't be there all the time. And That's so it. Uh, 
you know, you, many times then people have to rely on themselves to be able to go and defend themselves. And But the bottom line here is that he's discouraged from attacking what he regards to be a very good target because right. somebody would be able to be there quickly with a gun to stop him. That right. I, I, I can't tell you how many times when I've debated gun control people, they'll say, well, uh, he doesn't really care about whether people with guns can stop him because he wants to go and die anyway. And that's true. He wants to die, but... He but he wanted to kill a lot of people him. first. And if one right, of those exactly. uh, roommates, if one of those roommates of his, uh, the three roommates that he stabbed to death, by the right. way, if one of them had been armed and trained how to use a firearm, uh, there'd be a lot more living people from this incident. Seven, I guess. Uh, well, no, I guess four more. Four people would have lived and uh, others wouldn't have been injured. Um, so is, is our advice then, John, because this does get confusing. Some people are out there advocating saying maybe we make sure that college campuses, first of all, are not gun free zones. And secondly, that there are a lot of trained students. Maybe we start training students on college campus campuses how to react to violent situations. Right. Well, uh, I mean, the this, this shooting didn't quite occur on college campus, even though those are completely gun free zones uh, in California. But. Santa Barbara County, there's only 53 people in the entire county there in California which have a permit to carry a concealed handgun. Yeah. And so it's essentially the same as the mm -hmm. complete gun-free zone in the entire area outside of, uh, of homes uh, or buildings there. And, um, uh, you know, it would be nice if we lived in a world without violence, but given that we do, how do you get somebody there quickly? to be able to go and defend themselves and others. And, and, and having it so that people can go and carry concealed handguns is one big benefit. We, we have nine states now that to varying degrees mandate that if you have uh, a concealed handgun permit, then you have to be able to be able to carry it to some degree on college mm -hmm. campuses. Uh, 20 other states leave it up to the individual schools in those states to mm -hmm. determine whether that's going to be the case. Well, I can tell you, I, I live here in California, and I have tried to get my concealed carry and uh, because I've had very serious death threats before, uh, and that's not good enough. Even death threats in writing are not good enough. Even when you can prove it, they just don't give them in the state right. of California. Um, but, but, he, but people are saying, well, okay, but when someone's diagnosed mentally ill, we need to take their guns from them. Well, John, if we do that, we're going to be taking them, first of all, from every single military person uh, coming back from any sort of uh, seeing any sort of combat because 90 percent of them or more have post-traumatic stress disorder and that qualifies as a mental illness and so they won't be able to carry uh, some of the best trained people in our country uh, secondly with the new dsm-5 dr lott i can tell you that more than 50 percent of our population is easily diagnosable with a mental illness so that means they'll be taking guns from 50 percent plus all of our military who's ever seen combat uh, John, is that really the answer? Right. Well, obviously, I hope nobody's advocating that you would take it away from anybody that has any type of mental illness. Uh, uh, obviously, that encompasses an extremely broad range. Mm -hmm. The thing is, you want to have people who are at risk of violence to themselves or violence against other right. people. Right. Uh, of course, even then, you can go and use many types of weapons. It's just not guns where you can go and harm people. Obviously, this person stabbed some to death, and, and in other cases, uh, he injured a number of people with his car. Yeah. Yeah. But, John, uh, I always run out of time with you because you are such a wealth of information. I hate it. But I am out of time. Dr. Lott, thanks for being with us. We'll be back with more Focal Point. Thank you. And Tamara Holder, Fox News contributor and pardon attorney, going to talk a little Tamarisi, a little gun control. Stay with us for more Focal Point. I'm Dr. Gina Loudon coming back to you right after this.